So, there is something I haven't really talked much about yet, even though it was an extremely important part of samurai tradition. This being, of course, head taking. So, I wanted to make an extra video here discussing the history and importance behind samurai collecting and displaying defeated enemy heads. The tradition of head taking in Asia has ancient origins, as the concept of decapitating and showcasing your fallen enemy's head is a custom which can be seen in China as far back as the 200s BC. Thus its rise in popularity in Japan can be attributed through the spread of its practice from the mainland. However, in terms of the samurai, the earliest we begin to see samurai taking enemy heads is roughly around the 900s, although more unconfirmed reports of head taking most likely occurred before this point. In the earlier years of the samurai, combat was seen as more gentlemanly, where often on the battlefield two samurai would single each other out and engage in a duel, with the victor claiming his defeated foe's head, which he would then display to his lord for payment as a form of proof of service. Of course, this also worked to grow one's renown. If you were a samurai that had defeated many other samurai, thus taking many heads, if anyone was able to take your head, they would in turn gain much honor and renown from it. This continues so on and so forth. The most famous early example of head taking is with the rebel samurai, Taira no Masakaru, who was killed in 940 having his head taken back to the capital, Kyoto, to be displayed before the emperor and the imperial court. Although legend says, his head would eventually find its way back to the east. You can learn more about the rebellion of Taira no Masakaro in episode 2 of my Setting the Stage series. Before the Ginpei War and the establishment of the Kamakura Shogunate, the lords of clans had less ability to elevate the status and position of the samurai who served them, as well as lacking the ability of giving them land to rule over. Yet after the rise of the shogunate in 1192, where the samurai came to essentially rule the country, the shugo, military land governors under the shogun, now had the freedom to raise the ranks and status of samurai in their clan. There were still the old gifts of wealth and items, perhaps a fine sword, spear, or bow. But now, in addition, samurai could be given new ranks, titles, status, and land. Of course, one's own status could be grown simply by their own merit and hard work. However, a more rapid approach to gaining rank was through slaying and decapitating enemy samurai, and displaying the defeated head in front of their lord. In fact, this act became ceremonial. It was to be known as a head viewing ceremony. This tradition would grow and spread across the country until finally, by the Sengoku Jidai, Japan's warring states period, it was a common staple of samurai culture, where after a battle, a feudal daimyo would perform this ceremony, allowing his soldiers to come forth with the heads of their defeated enemies. What is extremely important to note is that during the Sengoku Jidai, samurai status was still acquirable to commoners and peasants. Thus, if a simple Ashigaru foot soldier somehow managed to slay an important samurai and present his head to his lord, this Ashigaru could have his position elevated to that of a samurai, transcending the feudal class system in Japan. Now, these head viewing ceremonies were carried out under interesting customs and guidelines. Heads had to be presented in an elegant fashion. Before battle, samurai would often make sure their head appeared suitable should they be killed during battle and their head taken. This often meant applying fragrances to their head so that it would smell good after decapitation, and even applying makeup to hide blemishes or scars. Whatever the case, a samurai wanted his own head to look good if it was to be presented. In addition, after a head was taken it was the responsibility of the samurai who took it to ensure this presentability. This would include washing it thoroughly, 
combing its hair back and blackening its teeth to showcase its noble status. The head would then be wrapped in white cloth, after which it would be placed on a wooden display with the name of whose head it was along with the name of who took it. There were some further formalities as well. For example, if the head belonged to an archer, it would be displayed with his bow. Although it should be mentioned that while on a campaign, there wasn't always time for a formal head viewing ceremony. In this case, things would be carried out a bit more rushed, leading to not all of the traditions and customs being followed through. However, this system was often exploited, along with the fact that it also ran into other issues. For one, some samurai or ashigaru tried to lie their way into receiving a reward. They take the head of a simple foot soldier, but attempt to present it as being a samurai with much higher status. Sometimes their trick would pay off, deceiving everyone around them. Other times, they were caught in the act. Also, some samurai would exit a battle early, after they had claimed a notable head, thus ensuring their payment and justifying that they had done their job in service to their lord, all while actually abandoning their responsibility to actually aid in achieving victory. Yet even without the presence of these exploits, the problem remains that head taking is still a rather lengthy process, as it frequently involved pinning an opponent down and using a blade to cut off his head. And in the heat of battle, when swiftness can be key to success, many commanders and lords began to notice this unfortunate, time-consuming side effect of head taking. All of these problems coupled together led to lords occasionally forbidding the taking of heads. However, in doing so, a lord also risked angering pretty much his entire army, as soldiers and samurai alike relied off of head taking for payment and gaining renown. The most famous example of a lord forbidding the taking of heads was at the night attack at Kawagoe in 1545, when Hojo Ujiyasu ordered his men to forego the act in order to ensure a more rapid assault. You can learn more about the night attack at Kawagoe in my Sengoku Jidai series video, Upsets in the East. Head taking as a tradition in Japan would continue well past the fall of the samurai and was carried out by the Japanese even up into the Second World War. So there you have it, an extra history lesson on samurai head taking. Hopefully this video will help to educate as well as fill in any gaps in my other videos. In the future I will continue to occasionally produce these extra samurai history videos so that we can shed light on many of the background details within feudal Japan and samurai culture. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.